In this video, I'm going to talk about the function called dput. And this function is useful for when you want to actually try to troubleshoot with a friend or someone that's on Stack Overflow. You want to put reproducible code on Stack Overflow. If you don't put the reproducible code on Stack Overflow, then you're going to get reprimanded and they're going to say, hey, give me an example that you can reproduce. And creating data frames from scratch can be somewhat uh, tedious if you're not too familiar with um, the structure of your data frame and how to reproduce that. So I'm going to show you a way to do that in a easy way. And I think that you will enjoy the fact that you can do this now. So that being said, I'm going to grab a data from this website here. It's ourworldindata.org slash coronavirus dash testing. I blew it up for you so you can see what this is. But if you scroll down here to the CSV file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and copy this link address. And that's where I'm going to paste it into our studio. And I'm going to do a COVID data is equal to assign it to read.csv and we'll just plug in that URL, control V, command enter. So what we see is COVID data has 32 variables of 20,000 plus observations. You can click on it, check, check it out. Here it is. Read all about it. Close that. What you could tell though is there's no way I can reproduce 20,000 plus observations of 32 variables. There's no way I can paste that type of text inside of Stack Overflow. I would get reprimanded big time. So let's use that dput function. We'll start with just saying, hey, here's my subset. Well, that's a bad word to use because it's a reserved word for R. Here's my COVID subset. And we're going to set that equal to a, we're going to use dput and we're going to bring in our COVID data, but, but we don't want all of 20,000 observations. So let's use the bracket syntax to say, Hey, I only want the first three rows, one through three, one colon three is one to three and then comma every single column. That's what that blank means. It means all columns command enter. And you're thinking, well, what does COVID sub mean? What does deep put mean? It doesn't really mean much as is, um, but what you can see down here is in the output, it created a lot of text. So let's grab this, this entire text. So starting with the word structure all the way down. And I'm going to do control C and I'm going to come back up and I'm going to say, uh, we'll call it COVID struct for structure, right? What am I going to assign that? I'm just going to do control V right here. It's going to look like crap. See, You've got all of this data that's been pasted. It doesn't look that good. So let's clean that up a little bit. So highlight from rows five all the way down to, let's go to uh, 23, just to be sure. Well, let's go to 24, it doesn't matter. I haven't showed you this yet, but it's a really cool feature. Control Shift A, the letter A will clean that up for us, boom. So now we have we have our original data set pulled from this website. We have, a, we have the structure of a subset of that data set. And then we have the structure being stored here. Well, not the structure. This is actually recreating the data frame called COVID struct. We haven't run this code yet. So let me run it real quick, command enter. Now let me scroll back up so you can see that again. So COVID struct, if you look over here in the environment, COVID sub is three observations. COVID struct is three observations of 32 variables. Yeah, yeah, so I recreated it is basically what it is. So in your, I know, they, I know they look like the same thing, but if you copy row three to Stack Overflow, they don't have COVID data. They don't have this. So it's not going to work. Somebody can't reproduce this. Now they can reproduce this particular example if they have the website, but let's just pretend they don't have that website. Let's say it's your own data set on your own computer that's not a publicly available, but you wanna give a subset of that. Um, so pretend that. And so that's why this won't work, but this will. Here's the caveat. Not really a caveat, but the rest of your code might be using COVID data as a variable. So COVID data, here's a function I'm putting in there. It's not working. I need help, I need help on Stack Overflow. And then you use the word COVID data 15 more times. What I recommend doing is literally when you're going to post this is just call this, this recreation of the data frame with the subset the same variable name. So I'm going to call it COVID data. Now, you don't want to keep it this way. You can comment this out and go back to the original data set. That's fine. 
But that way, all the code below this, way down here where you handle some of your COVID data stuff, is going to be, um, it's still gonna work, right? They're just gonna be working on a smaller subset. So you can actually copy and paste this into Stack Overflow and they would recreate this particular data frame right here. I hope that makes sense to you. Now, we didn't arbitrarily pick, well, we did arbitrarily pick rows one through three, but let's make that a little bit more, a little bit more convincing that it's a random sample. So let's create an index. We're gonna say, hey, this index is gonna be random numbers. So we're gonna say index of, what do we want? We want a random sample. I want a random sample of index numbers, so row numbers, right? So we know there's 20,556, so we can do one through 20,556, random number, I want um, three, three random numbers from that subset, or from that set of numbers, and I don't want the same number twice, so replace equals false. Simple as that, right? Command enter, we have an index, it looks like our numbers are right here, you can see them, 11,903, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, well, what if our data set changes tomorrow? Let's get rid of this and let's make this a little bit more dynamic. So we're gonna call that number rows, remember n row, and we'll put in COVID data. So now we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hit enter. You're gonna see that I have my index command, command enter. It's the same set of three numbers, but it still worked because the n row goes up there. Now, the reason why this didn't change numbers because it is random is because um, why didn't it change? <laughs> I don't know, I was gonna talk about set seeds. Set dot seed equals some number. Any number you want, you can pick any arbitrary number, set the seed, and then run index again. You'll see, oh, I'm getting an error. Okay, so let's go back. Let's, let's pretend I didn't say set seed. <laughs> and spell this correctly, C-O-V-I-D. There we go, index. Okay, so as it's supposed to do, if every time I run this, it's supposed to have different numbers. So I'm gonna run it again. You can see I have 17401 as that first one. Command enter. It's a different set of numbers. A different set of numbers every time, right? So keep doing that, different set of numbers. Now that could be a problem because you wanna reproduce this example over and over again. So that's where set.seed comes in. Pick any number you want, throw it in there. I mean, be reasonable, I guess. But it's your number that you're gonna say, hey, every time I want a random sample, because nothing is truly random, unless you're talking quantum physics here, um, you can reproduce that random sample over and over again. So it's the same random numbers, but it's still a random number. So every time I use this number, five years from now, if I use 23454, and then I run index, I should get the same number. So let's run that real quick one more time. Set the seed, index. Okay, so I have 12,128. Let's, let's delete this, all of it. Let's rerun COVID data. It's pulling in the data now. Let's run the set seed again and run index, which gets that 12,128 again, right? Now, it might not seem random because it's the same number. It's the same random, it's, it's random, but it's random based on this seed. So somebody can reproduce this random number. Hope that makes sense. Because again, you wanna reproduce it. If, if, if you're having a problem with the data and they can't get the exact same set of rows that you're talking about, there might be some weird problem where that mattered. So that's why it's, it's random, yet we can reproduce that randomness. That's what, that's what I'm talking about now. So now that we have that index, let's go down to COVID sub. Let's do this more, more uh, properly. So COVID data, and what do we want for rows? I want whatever rows the index was. I want those three rows. So I'm gonna pull just those rows and every column, the blank. So run COVID sub, and then now I'm gonna replace my COVID data again, only because, only because um, all the COVID data variables below it are using COVID data. So I want somebody to be able to reproduce all of that other code. So I'm gonna use, Watch my COVID data right here change to three observations when I reapply this structure and create a data frame from it. Command enter. And now I have three observations of two variables, COVID data. So you'd wanna paste this in and then whatever's below it, because anybody with this code, it's text. This is a text that you're gonna paste into Stack Overflow. You paste that in and you're good to go. And that's it. So again, if you guys enjoy these tutorials, please help me by sharing and liking. If you have any questions, comment below. I try to answer them. I will see you guys on the next one.